Welcome back to another episode of the Breast Cancer Physio. I'm your host, Jen McKenzie, lymphedema physiotherapist and ESSA accredited exercise physiologist. In this video, I'm going to cover the topic of when you should wear a compression garment. The reason I chose to do this topic is because every now and again, I see patients coming into my clinic and they're wearing a compression garment when they don't necessarily have to. And I think when you've gone through breast cancer, one of the best things we can do is remove any unnecessary jobs off your list. If you've been following my channel for a while, you'll certainly know that I'm a big, big advocate of trying to remove jobs off the plates of breast cancer survivors, breast cancer patients, because unfortunately, if you've been through breast cancer, there seems to be so many things that pop up during and after breast cancer that you just have to go and do. Things like follow-up scans, follow-up blood tests, to name a few. Um, it's a really busy time during breast cancer and even after active treatment is completed. So if there's stuff that you don't really have to do, um, then I think it is worthwhile you knowing that you don't have to do it. I just want to put a little caveat in here though and say if people would like to wear a compression sleeve despite what I'm about to tell you because it makes you feel more comfortable, it makes you feel more secure, by all means go ahead and do it. I have absolutely no problem in people ticking as many boxes as they want to tick to feel comfortable and safe. That's not a problem, but I'm definitely going to talk about the research evidence um, and statistically what's, what's out there as far as wearing a compression garment goes. So if you enjoy this content and you would like to see more, then please subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment in the section below, particularly if you have any questions around when to wear a compression garment. Okay, so let's get into it. When should you wear a compression garment after breast cancer? I should also make the point, guys, that when people have had breast cancer, they often have had lymph nodes removed. So not everyone that goes through breast cancer is at risk of lymphedema, but most people who have had breast cancer will have had lymph nodes removed. So therefore they are at risk of lymphedema. But the first point I wanna make in this video is that there is no research evidence to strongly suggest that wearing a compression sleeve is going to prevent you getting lymphedema. So that's probably the most important point of this video really, because there's a lot of people that have breast cancer, like I said, but they don't necessarily get lymphedema. So if someone tells you that you should be wearing a sleeve because you've had lymph nodes removed, that's not necessarily correct as far as the research evidence goes. Like I said before, if people want to wear a sleeve because it makes them feel more comfortable or it makes them feel like they're doing something proactive towards prevention of lymphedema, that's fine. But it's just good for everyone to know that the research evidence doesn't necessarily back you doing that from a statistical point of view. So if you don't have to do it, then that might be a little bit of a load off your shoulders to know that just because you're wearing a sleeve doesn't mean you're actually doing anything to prevent lymphedema starting. Now, there are a few random situations where we do advocate people wearing a sleeve even if they don't have lymphedema. So this is more of a preventative tactic. And again, the research evidence isn't necessarily that strong. These are more like guidelines rather than um, advice that's coming off gold standard research. And the two examples I'm thinking of are plane, long plane rides. So any plane rides that are over four hours in length and any long car trips. And the reason we suggest this is because there has been anecdotal evidence. So people reporting case, cases in which um, they have gone on a long haul flight or they've gone on a really long car trip and they feel like that was the activity that made their arms swell or that that's what led to them getting lymphedema. So in the circumstance of you going on a plane that's over a plane trip, sorry, that's over four hours in length or a long car trip, um, generally speaking, I advise my patients that any car trips over again, four or five hours, you should probably wear a sleeve. I believe the reason that lymphedema can potentially start with these activities is because typically on a long haul flight or in a long car trip, particularly if you're the passenger, um, you will tend to be quite still. And the lymphatic system re relies heavily on muscle contraction, movement, gravity um, to, to make it flow through. So if um, you think about it, wearing a compression sleeve is enhancing that 
um, the, the flow back effect, shall we call it, in the lymphatic system. So it's essentially enhancing um, the lymphatic flow, which is why we do tend to recommend you wear them on a plane or in a car trip. So just remember that if you don't have existing lymphedema, but you are at risk of lymphedema, those are two scenarios where we would tend to recommend that you do wear a sleeve, regardless of whether you've actually got lymphedema or not. Of course, if you've already got existing lymphedema, then it would definitely be recommended that you continue to wear your compression garment on a tr plane trip that's over four hours in length or a car trip that's over four to five hours in length. There is another interesting circumstance which I've seen um, assist patients who don't necessarily have existing lymphedema. Um, this is where they um, can wear a compression garment to help settle the symptom that is cording. So if you haven't heard of cording before, cording is a really common condition that can pop up after axillary lymph node dissection or even sentinel node biopsy. So if you haven't checked out my other videos on cording, I'll just put a little card up here now that you can go and check out if you're not sure what cording is and how it's treated. But I have had a couple of circumstances by which the ache and tension caused from the cord itself has led us to use a compression sleeve. And this um, appears to have given the patient some, some pain relief or symptomatic relief. So that's a random circumstance where I will use a compression garment um, where the patient doesn't necessarily have lymphedema. Certainly if they have existing lymphedema and then they also get cording. And I've seen this happen as well before where sometimes cording and um, light lymphedema or like not full blown lymphedema, but early lymphedema can, can almost go hand in hand. So sometimes potentially the sleeve is actually being used for early onset lymphedema, but it could also help symptomatically the, um, the cording as well. Regarding existing lymphedema, what I will say about when to wear a compression garment is that the best thing you can do as a person who's got existing lymphedema is to align yourself with a lymphedema therapist you, that you can trust. Now, because people from all over the world are watching this channel, I do appreciate that not everyone's got um, access to a good quality lymphedema therapist. So please consider a virtual appointment in these circumstances because there has been plenty of um, situations, certainly for me, where I've been able to help people um, in places where they can't get to me physically. And we have discussed um, how they can wear, how they can manage, how they can wear their compression garment, but also how they can manage their lymphedema. Um, so you don't necessarily have to be in the same physical space as a lymphedema therapist. Yes, it is ideal, particularly for taking measurements and for the therapist to be able to feel what's going on in your arm. There's a lot of things that can't be replicated, unfortunately, um, in a virtual appointment, but um, for, for a second fallback option, I really do think that if you physically can't get to a lymphedema therapist then and you've got existing lymphedema, that you should consider a virtual appointment because when it comes to lymphedema, compression garments are only one treatment technique. There's so many other levers you can pull that will help your existing lymphedema. So, um, and I'll probably should actually do a, a video on that topic by itself because um, a lot of people think that compression garments are sort of the be all and end all, um, and they're not very fun to wear, you know, particularly if you live in a hot or humid climate, um, they can be difficult to get on. Um, they need to be fit really well. So if you can get yourself aligned with a really good lymphedema therapist, I would really recommend that because at the end of the day, to answer the question of this video, which is when should I wear a compression garment? If you've got existing lymphedema, you should be wearing your compression garment as often as as is needed to control and maintain the swelling of that limb because we're assuming in this context that the lymphedema you've got is not necessarily going to go away. Um, this is a little bit different to early onset lymphedema and I'll talk about that in a minute but when you've got existing lymphedema so this is where we're sort of coining it stage two to stage three or even four and we're assuming that this lymphedema is not going to go away, then when you should be wearing your compression garment will be dictated by how your limb behaves. 
in the sense that you may have to wear your compression 24 7 you may be able to wear your compression only during the day but not at night you might have to have a particular type of compression garment for the day and then switch to a different one at night and then there are other people who are in a slightly better situation where they might have quite mild lymphedema that doesn't go away but they really only need compression garments for particular activities as an example some people would have what they consider quite mild lymphedema, but they may still wear a compression sleeve if they do exercise. So if they went for a walk or they went and did a gym class, they might only wear their sleeve for those physical activities. So just keep in mind that existing lymphedema doesn't necessarily mean you need a compression garment on your body 24 7 it may depending on the nature of the lymphedema but this again is where i'd highly recommend that you align yourself with a lymphedema therapist who can guide you as to when and how is going to be best to manage that lymphedema and and what the compression garment um, plan involves the last thing I want to mention in this video, guys, is with early onset lymphedema, um, the uh, standard protocol I use for compression sleeves, so this is in the circumstance where someone presents um, with very early onset lymphedema so that we've only just diagnosed it, um, the patient might be able to feel a little bit of fluid, they might be able to see a little bit of fluid, but you know, in the context of things, there's not that much fluid there. Um, but my ideal uh, protocol is that patients wear their sleeve like a work day so from eight till five seven days a week and then this is where we're using the ldex machine and i'll just put a little card to a video i've done previously on my ldex device which is called an impedimed sozo uh, these devices are the tool that i'm using to effectively diagnose the lymphedema combined with the patient's symptoms and history. So if a patient has early onset lymphedema, they would be asked to wear their compression garment from around 8 a.m. till around 5 p.m. every day. And then over the ensuing weeks, we continue to monitor their LDEX scores and that's where I can generally start to work out when I'm able to wean them off the compression garment. So this is quite a big change in the lymphedema world. We used to diagnose lymphedema and tell you, well, that's it. I'm sorry. You've got lymphedema. You've got it for life. You should be wearing a compression garment for the rest of your life. But with the technology available these days, we can now encourage people that um, with uh, early intervention that we potentially can get them into a compression sleeve, but then look to wean them off it. So there's plenty of um, patients at my clinic um, where we're diagnosing them at very early stages. And thankfully with the medical technology available, we can reverse lymphedema. We do keep a very close eye on these patients, as you can imagine going into the future, because there have been circumstances where people have had lymphedema relapse, but it's a much nicer circumstance where patients can and, um, get into a compression sleeve we teach them self lymphatic drainage and arm exercises to essentially um, reverse the lymphedema but you know we've got patients who then are sleeve free and self lymphatic drainage job free um, for a very long time um, and occasion there are situations like I said before where the patient has an incident where they, their lymphedema might spike and yes they do go back into a compression sleeve they get back into their self lymphatic drainage but overall they are mainly not having to wear a sleeve which is a much nicer circumstance than saying to somebody oh you know you've got to be in the sleeve 24 7 and that's it Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you've gained some really good information on when you should wear a compression garment. If you have any questions about when you should wear a compression garment, please leave a comment in the section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I have to say a quick apology to people who are sending me questions um, via YouTube. I will definitely get back to you. Um, there's lots and lots of questions coming into the channel now, so keep sending your questions. I'll just get back to you as quick as I can. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great week wherever you are. I'm Jen McKenzie, the breast cancer physio, and I'll see you next time.